Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this lesson we're going to make the baseline for the track, which is a super funky, energetic baseline that's easy to make. We'll also look at how to get better sounds in Cubase, which is what I want to do first. But don't get me wrong, Cubase does come with some built-in instruments like Halion, Retrolog, or Pad Shop, and they do have their uses, but you can get a much broader range of sounds and much of the time of better quality using free instruments. So don't worry if you have never done this before, I'll take you through the whole process. The instrument that we're going to download is called Vital. It's made by Matt Titel. So just Google Vital Synth and it'll be the first link. So you go to the website and then scroll down until you get to the Get Vital section. There are paid for versions, but the only difference between those and the free version is that you get extra presets. The free version is still the full synth. So click on the version you want and create an account. Once you've created an account, you'll be taken to this page where you can download the relevant version for your operating system. So if you're on Windows, click to download that. Once it's downloaded, click to install, accept the agreement, and just select VST3 and standalone. That's the only two you need. Then click next and install. Once it's installed, just restart Cubase and you should be able to find it. If you're on a Mac, download the relevant version. Once it's downloaded, either click to install it in the browser or go to your downloads folder and double click it, press continue, accept the terms and conditions, click the Macintosh HD icon, then continue and install. If it asks you for your Mac password, enter it here, and then just close it and restart Cubase. Obviously don't forget to save your work first. So that's the installation done. You now have a shiny new instrument to play around with that sounds amazing. So let's get on with the baseline and the same way that we loaded Halion, we're gonna do with Vital. So we're gonna right click in the channel area, select add instrument track. I've already got Vital selected, but if you wanna find that it's under the synth menu and then Vital. Make sure it's stereo and we'll call this baseline and then add track. So this is Vital. It's an incredibly powerful instrument capable of creating some awesome sounds. But as this is a beginner tutorial, I will stick to using presets that we have made, especially for this track, which are in the work files. And I'll show you how to get to those in just a second. For those of you who want more info on how to actually understand and use Vital, we have a free Vital tutorial on our site, borntoproduce.com. Just go to tutorials and then click free Vital tutorials and you'll find all the videos down here. So loading a preset in Vital is super easy. You just come up to the hamburger menu, click on open external preset, navigate to where the work files are on your computer. In my case, that's the desktop. I'll go into the tutorial download work files, vital patches, and then we want to double click bass slapper. Okay, so that's the preset loaded. We'll hear it in just a second, but first I'm gonna come out of vital and I'm going to turn this down. So let's just go to anywhere around minus seven is fine. We're gonna be balancing all of this later on and now we need to program in the notes for our baseline. So as I mentioned before, because we have this chord structure, it gives us all the musical info we need to make many more parts. So what we're gonna do is copy the simple chord progression, the one we colored in dark orange. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and just copy that over to the baseline track. Now you'll note that it's called piano at the moment. So I'm just going to rename the MIDI part by double clicking the baseline here, holding Shift and hitting Enter and that will rename the MIDI parts the same as the track. So let's double click to go into this. And this window really isn't big enough to give us enough room to work in. So we can keep clicking on open in a separate window, but you can change an option so it permanently opens up in a separate window. So we're gonna do that. So come up to the edit menu, go to preferences, and then under the editors tab, we want to change this from double click opens editor in lower zone to double click opens editor in window, and then click apply. I'm really sorry, that's just off the screen, so you can't see that, but I'm just clicking apply and then OK and hide my lower zone now. And then when I double click this, it's going to open up in its own window. So we've got all these notes in here and they are purely in there as a reference. So what I need to do is mute them. So I'm going to right click and select the mute tool, which is that X. You can also select it from the toolbar. And then we're just gonna highlight all of those and you'll see they're now grayed out, which means they're muted. I'm also going to select them and I'm gonna move them up two octaves because they're kind of in the way where they are. And all I need them for is just the reference, okay? So now we're gonna start programming in our baseline. 
Now, for almost all tracks, you want the bass line to use the root notes of the chords. The root notes are just the lowest notes in the chord. So in this case, it's A. Well, that's a little bit high. So we'd be using A down here. And then in the next chord, we'll be using F sharp, then C sharp and B. So I just want to move all of this over to the right a bit. So I've got room to actually click in the timeline. So I'm just going to hold shift and use my mouse wheel. And you can scroll left or right by doing that, which is quite handy. And then we can click at the beginning there. And I'm just going to play it and we'll sort of figure out what kind of bass line we want. So I've got something in my head. It's like sounds terrible when I hum it, but that's okay. Let's try and program that in. So we know the first note we're going to be using is A, and we're going to use the A down here. Let's just zoom in a bit. So I'm holding Control or Command. This is like da, da, two on the beat, and then I think let's just play that. See what it sounds like. And then I think it wants to go up here, so da, 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 which is C sharp. Let's just play that. Okay, that sounds cool. We'll just copy that entire pattern. We know we need this next one on F sharp, okay? So let's copy that over by holding Alt or Option. Oops, a bit too low. There we go, so F sharp. But this note is wrong, so we've got to change that. We'll have that going up to C sharp. Note as well, all of the notes we're using here are actually notes that are in the chord. So obviously the main bass note in the first bar is A, which is the root note of our chord. And then we're using C sharp, which is the second note in the chord. And again with this one, F sharp, which is the root note. And then we're using C sharp, which is the top note. So they're all notes that are being used already in the track. Just going to funk the second one up a little bit and let's use the middle note as well. Um, so we need an A. We're going to have it in there. Okay, so let's just listen to that. It's sounding good so far. Let's copy the first bar again and we want this on C sharp. So I'm holding shift and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll to the right. And I want to change this note here. So looking at the chords that we've got, we want to use E. So that's fine, we'll just drag that down one. And then we're going down to B in the last chord. But what I'm going to do is copy the second bar here. So let me just zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use this pattern here because we've got that extra note. And I'm going to copy this one over to B. And then we just need to adjust this note here. So instead of using a note that's actually in the chord, we're going to use a different note, which is down one. And by the way, you can use your cursor keys to move them up and down if you want. You'll also note that in the chords, it descends one after the other. So each chord is lower than the last one. But the bass line, although it descends in the second bar, it then goes up to C sharp rather than down to C sharp. That's just because the C sharp down here is a bit too low, whereas this one sounds better. So it doesn't matter which C sharp you use, as long as it sounds good. Now let's just play that. Okay, so it's really starting to take shape. And just a very quick note for anyone who's interested, where we used C sharp in the last bar, you'll notice that we haven't got C sharp in the chord above. So what this is technically called is an unstable note, meaning it's not a note that's being played at that time in the chord. All the other notes in the bass line are stable notes because they are notes that are being played in the chord. So just a handy tip, you can actually use a splattering of unstable notes in your melodies to introduce an element of tension, which makes it a little more edgy and interesting. So don't worry if that's gone over your head, it's not really that important for this tutorial. And if you really want to know more, you can always check out the Killer Melodies course. So as you can hear, the track is slowly coming together. We have a lot more to do and more elements like the leads, arps, SFX sounds to add. 
We need to arrange it, record vocals and mix it, and all that is coming up. But in the next lesson, we are going to take a look at adding plugin effects to some of our elements to make them sound better. And again, just a reminder of what you'll have by the time we finish. Here's a quick clip of the track. Feeling like I'm on the edge, wanna hide inside my head. Thanks for watching everybody, see you in the next one.